Most people love this time of year, although some may be a little tired and mutter, what a hassle, I'll be glad when it's over. Or they might say, it's too mercenary, it's been spoiled. Most people, however, rejoice in the singing of the carols and in the goodwill that they feel toward their friends and neighbors. Those people are, are apt to say, I wish it could go on all year. Well, today I would like you to consider with me the important of, importance of receiving, because quite often you will hear it's better to give than to receive. For most of us, it is much easier to give than to receive, but it is important that we learn how to receive. As it says in the Doctrine and Covenants, section 88, verse 33, For what doth it profit a man? If a gift is bestowed upon him, and he receives not the gift, behold, he rejoices not in that which is given unto him, neither rejoices in him who is the giver of the gift. In order to clarify a little what, bit what I mean, how many of you have beautiful scriptures which are truly a gift, and yet you do not receive it because it lies on the shelf collecting dust? Or you may be at church, and when the sacrament is given, your mind is not on what is happening. You're not receiving the gift. Or if you receive knowledge from the pulpit or in the classroom, unless you are actively participating with your mind, again, you do not receive the gift. All of these gifts are precious, and we should learn to appreciate and receive the good from these particular things. Since my illness, I have had ample opportunity to learn how great receiving can be. The members of my family and the members of our ward have been wonderful. My family takes care of my most intimate needs with love and gentleness. Ward members, too, have been most kind. They've given of their time and of their substance. People have brought flowers, food. They have even fixed my hair. Uh, I have a kind lady who comes in once a week and takes care of this. What a boost it is to the morale. Even the young priesthood bearers have been in and prepared the sacrament in order that I might keep my covenants. The young ladies of the mutual came radiant with good cheer, caroling and offering me a lovely Christmas stocking that had a thought for each day of the month. People have written cards and letters and shared themselves, so it has truly been a time of, of good receiving. I would like to tell you a true story today about an experience that taught me the value of receiving. Some of you will not be old enough to remember World War II nor Pearl Harbor, but those of you who do recall the great hysteria that hit the, the country after Pearl Harbor, and the Japanese people who had been exemplary citizens were suddenly regarded as villains, and they quickly evacuated them from the coast uh, to centers in Arizona, Utah, and Northern California. Now, the one that I'm speaking of is Topaz, which was a center in Utah. Hastily prepared barracks were uh, there. There were about 45 blocks in the camp. They had uh, more people than barracks, however, so it was not at all uncommon for them to put three and four families in a room. These families would put up blankets or sheets to sort of uh, put, fix a little space of privacy as best they could. It must have been horrible for those Japanese people who had been gardeners and loved beautiful plants. There was not live blades of grass and our trees in this desolate area. Instead, one of the first things we noticed that was that the soil, besides being alkali, was so loose and deep it came just about to our ankles. So it was not a lovely situation that they came to. The reason that we were there is that my husband had been hired to be the head of the Department of Math and Science at the high school. The high school had about a thousand students in it. When it was learned that I, too, had a teaching certificate, even though I was staying at home with my young baby, 
they recruited me also to teach, and they brought a lovely, mature Japanese lady to watch the baby while I taught school. And now, as I mentioned, there were about uh, 45 blocks, and the school uh, that I taught in was in Block 8, which fortunately for me was only about a block from our apartment so that I could run home at recess if I wanted to and see that everything was all right. I quickly fell in love with my class. They were so hungry for knowledge. They were respectful and a delight to teach. I had 32 students. Two were members or were students that had come from the staff, one boy and one girl, and the rest were Japanese pupils. But all of them were so great under these difficult circumstances. As the Christmas season uh, came near, I vowed that I was going to do everything in my power uh, to help them have a, a pleasant holiday. Now, I was well aware that not everyone in my class were Christians. We had a goodly number uh, who were Buddhist. So we discussed things first and talked about what we should do. Those who were Buddhist felt that all of the things that we had planned would be applicable to their religion and would not in any way not harmonize. So we began to decorate our room to make the little presents for our family. And then when it was announced that there would be a community Christmas program and they would like some of the students to participate, we volunteered to do a version of Dickens' Christmas Carol. They worked very hard and they were truly outstanding. It could not have helped but raise their self-esteem when they received a standing ovation. After the program, there were treats and uh, a sort of a party. Then we retired to our room, and there I had accumulated uh, some little gifts for them. I bought a hardbound copy of The Life of George Washington, and each child received one. It would be astounding, I'm sure, if we knew just how many places there that this was the only book that they possessed, and yet they were hungry to read and to study, so it was well received. When I went home that day, I felt very good and felt like it had been a success, little knowing that the best was yet to come. I had scarcely arrived home when there came a knock at the door, and there stood one of the little boys from my class, smiling broadly. He reached out his hand to me, and in it was a gallon bucket with some water and three minnows. It was very evident that he was giving me his treasured gift. And my first impulse was to say, oh, do keep it. You like this so much better than I do. But fortunately, I didn't yield to that temptation. Instead, I said, how do you take care of them? What do you do to keep them in good condition? And he again seemed to enjoy telling the teacher what to do. As he left, a little girl came up the walk, and she was bringing a beautiful Christmas card. She had exquisite artwork on it almost perfect printing and a message of love. It was very easy to accept that gift. As she left, there yet came another little boy. He was carrying a small box of crackers that he thought my baby could use. And I was just almost in amazement when next up the walk was our tall, shy Zaneo Sato. At first there was nothing apparent, and I knew that uh, he had no money and little with which he could get a gift and yet he looked different somehow. And as he came close, he handed me his ID card. Now, he had been drilled, as the other children had, that this was a very important thing. They must not lose it. They should have it at all times. And so feeling that was the only thing he had of importance, he gave it to me, and I accepted. Although it was hard to keep back the tears, I knew that I could go to the office and get a new one for him. I still have that card. Well, that's when I learned that receiving can be very precious, and I will never forget the experiences of that day. Before the day was through, almost every child in my class had paid a visit, bringing me similar gifts to the ones already mentioned. My heart overflowed. It was a most memorable experience. Now, it's been over 40 years ago since this happened. And it's, it just will not be surpassed for me. Although each of us have similar experiences, it was the truly important one to me. <clears throat> now, I am sure at this season, similar things may happen to you. Sometimes we are given gifts that on the surface we don't really want, 
like the flashy Christmas tie that is far from our taste, our clothing that's too small or not the right color, or any gift that we think we would never have chosen. When that happens, we should look beyond the gift to the giver because the real gift is that of love and that is never out of style. That is always wanted. So I hope this season that we will consider that. I would like to mention that our Heavenly Father loves us all very much and He has told us not only what is the most important gift but how we may receive it. In Doctrine and Covenants section 14 verse 7 he says and if you keep my commandments and endure to the end you shall have eternal life which gift is the greatest of all gifts of God and in John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life I challenge us all to become better receivers that this new year will be one of our most happy times. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, whom we honor at this time. Amen.